districts, as an example, in, in New York City, up, upwards to 30% of the traffic in New York City are actually people that are looking for traffic spots. This is a very interconnected problem, which is why I want to get into uh, the sort of the concept of smarter cities and just give you a frame of a, of, of a concept here, um, which we simplify as, as meaning, how do we take a, an explosion of data? How do, we, how do we take an explosion of data and turn that into insight so that we can fundamentally alter um, the, the systems that we rely on uh, every day? And, you know, it's so a bit of a busy chart, but what it effectively says is that we have this graph, this, this dramatic uh, urbanization that's going on. By, 20, uh, by 2050, 70% of the world's population will live in cities. And there's lots of different factoids that I could, uh, that I could cite. Everything from um, in China, in the next two decades, 350 million people will move from rural to urban. And that same scenario is finding itself in India, 250 million people, and in South Africa, or, or in Africa itself, uh, 350 million people. So just a tremendous movement of people from rural to urban, which is really starting to create some of these challenges that we have. Um, and, it, and it's really manifested in you know, the, the increase in the amount of traffic and, of course, the implications, as I talked about in a, a previous couple of slides. And we do have a very major infrastructure gap in front of us. It's measured in hundreds of billions of dollars if we actually add up all of the infrastructure. So this is all being driven by this massive urbanization. We're sitting at about 80% um, in Canada and the US today. And then in the next, next couple of decades, that number is going to creep up to about 90%. So this, isn't a, this is not a trend that's going to go away. And of course, um, it's really putting pressure on our basic infrastructures. And what we're going to be talking about today is about traffic, uh, transportation, transit, and, and, and our opportunity to really unleash all of this potential. But it certainly finds its way into the basic infrastructure that we rely on day in and day out, whether that be you know, fresh water and wastewater management or in energy. And if uh, on the right-hand side, uh, this is an, a, a picture of, of something I experienced when I was here um, a, a number of years ago when we had the, the blackout. And, and it's just amazing how fragile some of our systems are. You come to rely on it day in and day out. And when a problem like occurred in the Northeast, uh, where all of these, the electrical grid basically, you know, crapped out. We were two to three days without, without power. And I know it very well because I was in the Delta Hotel uh, here on the 14th floor with no elevator. And uh, out back, we were actually cooking with uh, fire. Yeah, so we, we actually went back to caveman status. For, you know, fire to eat and, and light. And it actually was very enlightening because it says, you know, you can actually live without some of these, these uh, wonderful... Um, uh, wonderful things that we've created over time that make our life easier and easier. Um, but there are lots of opportunities, and that's really where our, our smarter cities focus, driven off of our smarter planet strategy, come from. And I just want to take you through a couple of ideas here. There's just a tremendous amount of, of data that's being created. We, we swim in data. There's a, um, a, another sort of a, a wow gosh uh, factoid here, and, and it, it comes from our friends um, at Google. And it says that in the next two days, we're going to create as much information that was created from the dawn of time to the year 2000. Now, here's, and here's some of the reasons why. We have 2.4 billion people that are on the internet today. We've got as, about as many mobile phones as we have people in the world today. And that number continues to grow on an exponential curve. And then we have this idea we call the internet of things, where you have you know, I'll use a very simplistic example. You know, your, your, your clothes washer or your clothes dryer has, has enough smarts in it to actually communicate to the grid and take action based on a set of profiles that you might give it. And that's sort of a machine-to-machine -machine type of communication. And that is going to grow exponentially as we put more and more devices in cars, in uh, consumer products, et cetera. So we're going to be swimming in this massive amount of data for the next 100 years or more. And, and we have this sort of concept of that this is where the opportunity is. These little icons on the bottom, it says that the world is steadily getting instrumented. We bring that data together and interconnect it through networks like the internet and all kinds of specialized networks and databases and such. And we use this new advent of intelligent, smarter analytics. We can actually turn that data into incredible intelligence that will allow us to actually solve a number of the problems that we're dealing with today. Now, it's not the be-all and end-all, 
but I think it really can buy us some, some time, it can create some creativity as we start to think about the world and how it's going to shape out in the future. This complicated chart uh, really just says it's not just transportation. This really is a complex system of complex systems. And any city knows this very, very well. Um, transportation has implications with public safety. It has implications with the ability to get water. It is a very complicated system. And the circle around it says, and it has implications to systems outside of what I'll call the traditional bureaucracy or the traditional management system that we use in our cities. Everything from hospitals, universities, as you can see here, not-for-profit organizations, one of which we're, we're, we're working on today. A lot of pressures, a lot of back-and-forth communications required. This is a very complex environment. But the smarter cities notion really means that in that complexity and in that massive amount of data, we do have techniques and ideas, and there are cities around the world that are starting to really take up that idea and change their thinking and alter their systems to actually, instead of having to perhaps replace infrastructure, they're able to use that information to extend the life of that infrastructure, to free up resources to do other important things at the moment. There's no doubt that we're going to have to build more subways, we're going to have to build more infrastructure, but by using information more strategically, uh, we have an opportunity to do even more and to, um, to provide better, better service and a better experience for the people that live in these cities every day. So smarter transportation really is this notion that, that we can take this information and we can get a lot more visibility across, you know, the first, the first value proposition, if you will, is that we can get a lot more um, uh, visibility across the network and we can start to leverage that information. But the next layer is really that we can start to anticipate what might happen. By taking that data, by using the analytics, we can start to pinpoint what might happen. When might a particular mode of transportation get to this point that then I can link up with the next mode? And how can I manage that system in the last, the last phase and coordinate with that data more effectively to create a more seamless experience, to create an experience that you can actually predict? Because part of the issue we were talking the other day, and Pat was talking about using his, uh, uh, I think it was his BlackBerry to, to get around. And it wasn't so much that the BlackBerry was so powerful to tell him where to go. It was that he had an expectation of how long it was going to take. And in many cases, it's really just about that. So, so this is a very, very you know, important, um, uh, important area, but with tremendous, uh, tremendous potential. Cities around the world are, are beginning to use these techniques and these ideas to really fundamentally reshape the transportation system, ecosystem as a whole, as we know it. And my point here is that this isn't just about, this isn't about technology, really. This is really about, you know, fundamental, fundamental change to the systems as we know it. But the, the point here is that there's real business value to be unleashed through using these, uh, these approaches. If we look through um, a very simplified um, uh, chart, just to, to kind of explain that this is a continuum. You know, you have to start somewhere, and you, you know, when you take this thinking, you want to apply it to your particular environment, you have to start somewhere. And we kind of look at this as a bit of a progression. You know, you want to start by preparing for smarter transportation. You want, then want to build, think about building this in an integrated way. And then once you have that built, how can you actually uh, use that to coordinate and optimize and truly deliver world-class experience? And what I want to do is just give you a few small examples um, of uh, this, of, of, uh, cities in this continuum, just to give you a bit of food for thought. The first one is preparing for smarter transportation. This is an example of, um, it's actually from our research organization. Um, uh, IBM uh, Worldwide has a uh, very uh, exciting and terrific um, research organization, 3,000 researchers, and many of them are thinking about these kinds of problems, particularly in the context of smarter planet, smarter city. This is an um, output from some work that we've done with the city of Dubuque, which is about 60,000 residents, and the city of Istanbul, which is, uh, add a few more zeros to that. And the notion here is that we can take a lot of that data that exists today, put it through a number of models and use analytics, and actually study how the system operates today. 
And by doing that, we can find out, so where are the opportunity areas, where are the choke point areas, how does this system actually behave? And then on the basis of that, we can make some fundamental decisions to alter our strategies. We found with the city of Dubuque, as an example, that we were able to save them in the order of, and they're, they're, remember, they're a small city, the a neighborhood of a million to two million dollars every year, just by sort of restructuring how they manage their system. And it's just using information that they already have today. And of course, Istanbul, the number is uh, far greater. So uh, this is really a fine example of taking a problem, which is a, you know, a transportation ecosystem, using this technique of turning data to insight, and ending up with a set of decision points that I can actually start to alter and make, uh, make changes. Here's an example of building an integrated transportation system. Many of you probably would have uh, uh, heard about this, but this is uh, Singapore. And Singapore is really into a next generation um, integrated multimodal system um, with a you know, particular card, you know, much like the Presto card, um, with some other capabilities that allows them to use a card uh, through a, um, a standard that's a, a purse, contactless purse standard that they can actually use that no matter what mode of transportation they're using, what form of congestion charging they're having to, to deal with, and they can actually use that card uh, for uh, small micropayments along the way. So it's part of that sort of economic development strategy in and around the transportation environment. Um, now clearly they've got some advantages. They're a lot smaller, um, and they have a governance system that you know, is a little bit more um, um, adept, and, and when they actually uh, come up with a goal, they can actually execute through pretty well. But that aside, you know, that aside, it's still a model that we can aspire to. And I could actually, I could actually, I could actually make a statement. I won't um, because no, because of the politics. Um, look, I went to I went to a meeting on uh, on Friday, and I was waiting for the mayor to to show up. And I don't know if he actually did, but um, um, anyway, it's fascinating uh, politics here. <laughs> And by the way, no disrespect to anybody. I have no, it is what it is, guys. Um, the last one I want to use is really uh, something that, uh, you know, could be construed as quite uh, controversial. So this is the city of Stockholm who implemented um, a, a notion called congestion, char congestion charging. And I know there's been uh, a lot of talk around this area about they call it road user charging, et cetera. Well, Stockholm, you know, set the goal of being one of the most success, uh, accessible capitals in the world. And, you know, and they took the, the risk. Um, by the way, if you would have polled the population, and which they did, uh, before embarking on this approach, it was extremely negative. But they took the political risk to do it. They implemented congestion charging. They've been able to actually reduce the number of uh, vehicles um, in the city area by 25%. They've been able to reduce the carbon emission by 14 to 15 percent. And, and this tax is just not a tax to, you know, to, to cause those particular things to happen. They're using that money now to increase in, in more transit, more park and ride facilities, in more of a holistic uh, ecosystem. Now you fast forward three, uh, three years after the implementation, and you, re, you, you, you look at the population and you ask them again the question. Funny enough, now 80 percent of the population says that was absolutely the right thing to do. So sometimes it takes some political courage. Um, just some thoughts about, um, we're not, we're not going to get away from having to build new things. We're not going to have to, we're not going to get away from having to put in new LRTs or whatever that might be. But the point is, we really not, need to start thinking about more of a smarter approach. So it's not just so much, what is it I have to build, but how can I actually manage the existing infrastructure I have more effectively by using data and managing uh, uh, demand and supply? Um, urban planning is very critical, but how do I do a better job of affecting the urban form by getting feedback from the operational systems as opposed to just, you know, in a more, on a more static basis? And then lastly, um, you know, it, it's really about optimizing the whole, not the parts. And generally, we do, we do a pretty good job of, of working on getting our departments more effective. We don't really do as good a job in terms of creating a more effective system. Just lastly, um, I wanted to just you know, say these aren't, these aren't the be-all and end-all examples, but it takes really um, um, a different kind of uh, structure and system as we make our decisions. These are just a couple of examples of a couple of agencies that actually look at this problem as a single whole. So they have all the modes within their purviews. So they're able to look 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years from a multimodal perspective. 
So TransLink in Vancouver is one example of that, and of course Transport for London is another. And, um, and really I think that is the, the, you know, just a few thoughts that uh, um, um, I want to try and give you a bit, quick cross section of, you know, what the Smart Cities thing is about, uh, what's this holistic um, ecosystem of transportation opportunity about, and maybe some uh, thoughts in terms of how we structure our decision making and our approach to it. And I uh, just wanted to give you that view. Uh, hopefully, it'll just set, a, set the stage from one context, because I know you've got a lot of great speakers today that will take you through a lot more um, uh, of the real data that's going on in, in this particular jurisdiction. I look forward to um, uh, being with you today and look forward to the panel later on. Um, and uh, have a great day. Work hard. Um, I'm amazed that you're all here on a Saturday. And I and, uh, look forward to speaking to many of you uh, for the rest of the day. Thank you.